we go again. All right, guys, here we are again. It is the night before the AMD Radeon RX 6800 and 6800 XT launch. I'm again in line at Micro Center, and the rumor is there's only 10 6800s and two 6800 XTs to be had at this Micro Center store. So is that an actual launch? I don't think so. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and after spending another night camping out in front of the Denver Micro Center, missing out on the initial 12 cards the store had in stock at opening this morning, waiting another hour for a truck that arrived with no cards on it, and then sitting out in the cold until a second truck arrived, which did have just 10 more cards on it. And my position in line was number eight. Yes. After 14 hours of freezing my took us off, I was able to purchase this AMD Radeon RX 6800. Now, before I get to the card and put up the benchmarks, I want to take just a moment and talk about this launch or non-launch. Because as opposed to pretty much every reviewer had a card in hand and was able to review it, I think I have a unique perspective as a normal consumer who just happens to have a little tech channel on YouTube. So was this a failed launch? Well, I can't speak for the entire world, but in my little slice of it, yeah, fail. Like I just said, I camped out in front of the micro center for this, and this is the third launch I've done this for. The first time I was after the RTX 3080, but I was way late on that, about 80 people back in line. However, they did get between 40 and 50 of them and a handful of 3090s and several people were able to order them online from their phone while waiting in line. For the 3070 launch, I got word early that there were only getting about 50 and there were already that many people in line, so I skipped that one, but later found out that just after opening, they got a drop of almost 200 in the morning. People were just walking in throughout the day and buying them right off the shelf. I learned my lesson by the Ryzen 5000 launch, and I got to the store at about 2 a.m. to be number 34-ish in line, and I got my 5600X as soon as they opened. Now, there were plenty of 3800Xs and 3600Xs, but limited 3900Xs, and a plane malfunction left all the 3950Xs sitting on a tarmac. But even two hours after launch, at least two guys near me in line were able to order 5900Xs online from B&H Photo and Best Buy. That brings us today, the RX 6000 series launch. So I got in my truck right after dinner, drove an hour plus to dinner to get my place as number 34 in line at about 7 p.m. thinking I'm good. NVIDIA was a horrible launch and they got 40 3080s on launch day and AMD said they learned lessons from that poop show and wouldn't be making the same mistakes. High level execs were trolling people on social media and betting them 10 bucks they'd be able to get a card on launch. Well you lost Frank and you better start handing out them Hamilton. Let's recap today's launch from my perspective anyway. I waited outside in the cold all night at one of the largest brick and mortar stores where you can actually buy computer components and have them installed and running in your system on launch day. And that store had a grand total of two RX 6800 XTs and 10 RX 6800s on launch. By a miracle, they received just two more XTs and eight more non-XTs on a FedEx truck later in the morning. Now, because everyone in line knew their chances of getting a miracle truck in the morning were slim to none, as one of the managers put it, everyone was on a phone, tablet, or laptop at launch trying to buy one, and it wasn't that they just sold out within seconds on some locations, because, I mean, that happened, but many of the big locations didn't even have any to sell on launch. B&H put out a statement on their site that basically said, we ain't got none, we don't know when or if we'll get some, so we can't sell you none. It's, well, technically the next day, and Best Buy, one of the largest retailers, is yet to sell a card. They're still coming soon. So, yeah, this was personally the worst launch I've experienced. Now, 
I'm not gonna argue lousy supply versus overwhelming demand. Basically, when a major retailer just comes out and says, we can't sell you what we haven't received, that's pretty self-explanatory. Anyway, what made this the worst launch, in, in my opinion, was the fact that AMD swore up and down it wouldn't be and continues to deny it was. I mean, AMD, you're making such big strides by making actually good stuff. Ryzen is at the top of the consumer CPU market and with RDNA 2, you have the chance to do that in the consumer graphics lane, but be honest with your consumer base. When you're wrong, just admit you're wrong. And when you know you're gonna have limited inventory at launch, just be transparent and inform your customers. Don't let us hear it from some random board partner rep and then try to discredit that leak when we obviously know now it was true. If you just came out and said, we're encountering supply chain and component manufacturing issues, which will result in limited numbers of products on launch and then like outline a plan to bring more inventory to the market with estimated timelines and stockage. Maybe people wouldn't be so pissed right now. Anyway, guys, AMD will never see this. They don't even return my emails, but maybe if enough of you like like and share this video, who knows? The bottom line is I got lucky and scored an RX 6800 this morning. And even though you might not have, you will eventually be able to hopefully get your hands on one. Maybe even this one right here. So make sure you get subscribed for more info to come in a future video. So why did I spend all night outside Micro Center in November in Colorado to get this card? Because quite honestly, I don't need a new graphics card. Well, I did it to run an honest and goodness retail sample through the paces and arm you, the viewer, with the knowledge you may need to make an informed decision when you're ready to purchase a new graphics card. And the first bit of knowledge is to explain why on the day the AMD reference card launched, why I'm holding a Sapphire card. Now, most of you probably already know this, but I was actually surprised by how many people at Micro Center this morning weren't aware that AMD relies on its board partners to produce most of its reference model cards. So while this box might be different from the one you saw a multitude of reviewers unbox a reference 6800 from earlier this week, as it's just a plain brown cardboard box, no fancy insert with logos and catchphrases, but inside, is the same reference card you've seen unboxed a dozen times this week. Exactly the same. In fact, if I peel this sticker off right here, you'd never know it was a Sapphire made card. So regardless if it's an Asus or an XFX or an MSI or a Power Color or this Sapphire reference card, it's exactly the same. One design, many makers. I didn't even know what flavor of reference 6800 I was getting this morning. I just handed the cashier my voucher and he brought me this. Now, the aftermarket cards, your Asus Strix, MSI Gaming Trio, Red Dragon, on and on, those will be released next week. So be prepared for your sub box to be full of those reviews soon. Not for me though. I'm done camping out at Micro Center for a good while anyway. Okay, so. I'm not gonna go over the card physically. You've seen one reference card, you've seen them all. I did wanna make one suggestion though for those of you complaining about the, the red trim here. Two words, paint pens. Any color you want. So the agenda for this now that I've ranted for a while is to stick this thing in my test system and run all about 18 synthetic and gaming benchmarks. Now. First, the test system I'm using is different than most. No 10900K or 5950X. Nope, for this $580 graphics card, I'm using a $300 Ryzen 5 5600, six core, 12 thread, 3.6 gigahertz base, 4.6 gigahertz boost CPU. And mine actually boosts to 3.7 gigs just by default. This is a great CPU and you can check out my full review here or find the link below. 
Anyway, there will be plenty of reviews on top-end several thousand dollar test systems, and while those reviews are the standard way to eliminate all potential bottlenecks from the GPU performance, I wanted to give you an alternative review in a system that's more appropriately balanced. I mean, if you have an R9 5900X or a 5950X, you're probably holding out for the RX 6900XT or at least the 6800XT. The one slightly overkill thing in the test system is 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 MHz CL16 memory. None of the games I'm testing need 64 gigabytes, but the only four stick match kit I have is a Trident Z 16 gigabyte by four kit. So we'll get the benefit of dual rank and the extra capacity will really have no effect. It's all attached to an Asus Prime X570 Pro motherboard with the latest BIOS, the latest Adrenaline Graphics Driver version 20.11.2. I've also enabled Base Address Registrar or Smart Access Memory on the motherboard because it's just a click in the BIOS, so I mean, why not? It may or may not actually provide any measurable performance uplift, but it, it can't hurt. Also, the non-XP 6800 doesn't have rage mode so we're just going with default boost clock i'll be doing a follow-up video exploring some manual overclocking with this card as well as going into some more details and testing smart access memory and things finally the whole system is housed in my be quiet 500 dx not an open test bench but again trying to keep this one more realistic i've actually already done all the testing and can tell you that the card maintained a peak boost clock of 2250 megahertz and an average temp at full load of about 70 degrees celsius as far as testing i ran the usual synthetic benchmark suspects and 14 gaming benchmarks at 1080p 1440p and 4k using the game's ultimate or top graphics preset unless i otherwise note that being limited to what i have i tried to pick a good cross section of games some the same as what I'm sure other reviewers have run, and some hopefully different. I also tested an RX 5700 and an RTX 2080 Ti for comparison. Now, I know this card is supposed to be a direct competitor to the RTX 3070, but like I said, I missed that launch. And it trades blows with the 2080 Ti, so that'll work. Also, at its price point, the 6800 isn't a direct replacement for the 5700, I think AMD will probably release something like a 6700 at some point in the future, but in the current product stack, the 6800 is the next generation to the 5700, so I included that to see how much of a performance leap there's been. We'll see. Camping out at Micro Center, getting the card, getting it home, plugging it in, running all the tests, recording this, editing and uploading a video. It doesn't leave me much time to check out any other reviews. Anyway, with all that said, let's roll the graphics starting with the synthetics. And right off the bat, I tested AMD's ray tracing capabilities. Now, it's important to note that real-time ray tracing is new to Radeon cards and will undoubtedly improve with time, but it's also important to note that we're comparing it to Nvidia's first use of hardware ray tracing also, and the 6800 underperformed the 2080 Ti in the DirectX 12 ray tracing feature test by 21% while coming in about 5% behind in Port Royal. I can only assume this lead would be lengthened by the more polished RT cores in the 3070. As far as raw performance, we see the 6800 came to play, crushing the 2080 Ti scores in Time Spy and Fire Strike and edging it out in Superposition 1080p Extreme by 269 points. Again, I put the RX 5700 in here as the second best card AMD had just two days ago, but I'm not going to comment on it too much other than to say now that it's not really a fair fight. On to our gaming results. We're starting with our more popular battle royale or shooter style games, and here the two top cards trade blows with the 6800 edging out the 28Ti by 15% in Warzone, while the 2080Ti has a 5% advantage in Overwatch. CSGO was tested at low presets, and we see the results tighten up across all three as we're CPU bound here, but who can see over 360 FPS anyway? 
As we move into our AAA titles, we see the RX 6800 start to pull significantly ahead. Here we have a statistical tie on Borderlands 3, but then more of a trouncing by the 6800. Another dead heat with Assassin's Creed, likely due to being CPU bound, while the 2080 Ti gets its first AAA victory in Metro Exodus. Also, I unintentionally grabbed the Borderlands 3 data a second time. This will repeat in each graph, so just disregard. In the end, the 6800 bests the 2080 Ti by 8%, which is hugely impressive considering it costs less than half as much. Moving on to 1440p, we give the RX 6800 a chance to stretch its legs, and it begins to run away. The 6800 increased its lead over the 2080 Ti by 5 points to 13%. Now on to 4K, and here we see frame rates for all the cards start to suffer. Not that the 5700 was ever intended to be a 4K gaming card, but then again, I am running ultra graphic presets. At 4K, the RX 6800 outperformed the last generation king of 4K gaming cards by almost 15%. So judging from my view length performance, ooh, most people make up their own minds from the benchmarks and then bail, but I'm gonna give you my thoughts anyway. So first, it looks like similar to Ampere, Big Navi or RDNA 2, demonstrates less gains over previous generations in 1080p as the architecture has really been optimized for higher resolution gaming. Now, this doesn't make it a bad 1080p card. Judging from the results, this card would make a great 1080p 144Hz gaming card or even a 1080p 240fps in some competitive games with the right setting tweaks. However, I think the best place for this card is in the 1440p 120 to 144 SPS gaming lane. In fact, I'll be specking out and building a gaming system with this card and this CPU to pair with a 2K 144 hertz FreeSync monitor and tuning some games for 1440p 120 or 140 FPS play. So stay tuned for that. Finally, this card is obviously a better 4K gaming card than my current 4K gaming card to 2080 Ti it just crushed, but despite its 16 gigabytes of VRAM and the 4K gaming badge on the box, I think if you're really serious about 4K gaming, you'll probably be better off stepping up to the 6800 XT as you'll likely be able to maintain better frame rates without sacrificing graphic settings too much. Now, the big question, is it worth the extra 70 or $80 over the RTX 3070? Well, it didn't directly test it against the 3070, but I can take the data from the charts I just showed you and compare it to a 3070 testing against the 2080 Ti and derive what I need to know. My guess is that if I were to calculate the strict cost per frame, the 3070 would probably come out on top, but personally, I'd pay the extra money for the extra eight gigs of VRAM because in my opinion, more than a six core or versus an eight core or 16 core CPU or single rank versus dual rank memory, I think in the long run, the biggest benefit in gaming you'll see is from more VRAM. Once game developers really start taking advantage of smart access memory and the process of texture mapping is sped up, we'll see big improvements in frame times. Anyway, guys, I've talked for long enough. Make sure you hit that like button. It really does help out with the algorithm and be sure to get subscribed for more content like this. 
Also, if you have any questions, ask in the comments below. And also let me hear your horror stories or happy stories if those exist on trying to buy any of the new tech launched recently. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.